Welcome to this demonstration of our leading track and trace application, powered by the Strato platform for blockchain solutions. My name is Sid Seifkin, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you this new technology and to see if you may have an application that I could assist with. In this video, Samrat from our product team will be introducing some of the features of our solution. As we go along the way, here are a couple of key points to listen for. Single sign-on so that we have easy access for all. Private chains so that sensitive data between parties can remain confidential. And the Block Apps dashboard to monitor the efficiency of the solution. So let's join Samrit for the demonstration and I'll check in with you at the, at the tail end. Uh, we're gonna walk through the track and trace app and uh, we're gonna take a look at the Strato dashboard, which is essentially a point and click interface to, the, uh, to a Strato node. Uh, we're gonna walk through the track and trace app itself, review how uh, we are able to use single sign-on using OAuth, uh, we're using Keycloak, but um, this could easily be replaced by any other identity provider like Google or Microsoft Azure, for, for instance. Uh, we uh, will look at how the smart contracts work and we'll track an asset, an agro asset through its life cycle as it makes its way uh, from the manufacturer to the distributor to the retailer. We'll see how uh, the bidding process is enabled by a uh, the closed bidding process is enabled by private chains. We'll discuss the governance and uh, we'll also see how a regulator can have visibility into this closed bidding process in a secure private manner. And throughout, we'll be referencing the, the actual blockchain backend using the Strato dashboard to see how all of this comes together. So with that, let's just uh, get started. I'm gonna log in as an administrator on uh, a Strato node. Uh, using single sign-on. And um, this is the Strato dashboard with every uh, Strato node that is installed. You get this dashboard. This dashboard basically shows you the health of your node, how many other nodes you're connected to. Uh, you can browse the blockchain uh, at a very low level. So you can look at some low level details. You can look at all the transactions. You can look at all the contracts that are deployed on, on the blockchain. So right now, uh, this is an existing chain that we have already deployed the asset tracking application to. So we're seeing contracts, uh, smart contracts that would enable that asset tracking. So let's go uh, check out the app uh, itself. So I am going to log in as a manufacturer into this application. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, an agro asset. So let's say, um, I'm going to create um, a herbicide and let me just make sure that I grab the correct values. So we're going to create uh, a goal to um, herbicide. Uh, we're going to give it a skew. This is the skew that I'm actually using here is the actual UPC of this product. Um, this is a 2.5 gallon jug uh, and the suggested price, retail price is $180. Uh, and then I can add any number of uh, attributes to this product. So I can say that the EPA registration number is, um, you know, 6719. Four to four, I can add uh, some more values. I can say the manufacturer is Dow Agro Sciences. I can add a GTIN number. Uh, and let me just grab this. And then this becomes so in this way, you can describe an actual product and give it various different attributes to help uh, other participants on this network identify this product uniquely. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this asset. And what this does is as a, as a manufacturer, what I just did was I uploaded a smart contract with these asset attributes. And 
I can also see that you know this asset lifecycle is being tracked on the blockchain. So as of now, there's only one event that has happened, which is that the asset has been created. Now, as the manufacturer, I can make this available for bidding on this network. So I can go ahead and request bids against this. And what that allows us to do is it allows other participants on the network to bid against this asset. So let me sign in as the distributor. And when I sign in as the distributor, I see that this chain has uh, an asset that I can bid on. So I can go ahead and bid on it. Let me go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna bid this. And what this will do is it will actually create a private chain between the manufacturer and the distributor. Um, and the goal of that private chain is to actually keep this bid secure. So it's a closed bidding process and only, and not everyone on the network should be able to see this bid, only the people participating in this bid and maybe someone who is a regulator on the network should be able to see this bid. So that is what this private chain does. It allows us to create these closed subgroups on, on, a, on a blockchain network so that information on that subgroup stays just within those participants and not everyone can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bid on it. So as you can see, this bid has been created. And then if I go to the manufacturer screen, I can and refresh my view, I will actually be able to see this bid pop up. And just to better illustrate this point, uh, we can at this point log in as a as, as a retailer and we'll be, we won't be able to see the bid. We'll be able to see the asset because the asset is public to all uh, participants of the network, but we will not be able to see the bid. So if I go here and I click on the asset, I, I see that an asset was created and I see that bids were requested, but I don't see the distributor's bid because that's private to the distributor and to the manufacturer. So now as the manufacturer, what I can do is I can accept this bid. And once I accept this bid, uh, this transaction will be settled in that some token value is transferred from my account to the distributor. And uh, also the ownership of the asset will change and the distributor will become the new owner. So let me go ahead and accept this bid. And what this does is it actually changes the ownership of the asset. And if I go to the distributor screen now, I will see this asset pop up in under my assets. So the ownership has changed. Um, and at this point, just to illustrate, this is a very generic application. We're using it as, as a way to demo this life cycle, but you can imagine any similar situation playing out. So this is a way to track an asset from its creation as it goes through various life cycle stages and also as it you know, changes ownership and ha has a clear history that you can look at and, and verify. So as the distributor now, I can, I can sell it to other participants on the network as well. So I can go ahead and request further bids. And then I can have a retailer bid on this. And as a retailer, again, I don't see any of the previous bids because I'm not party to them. I, I do see that, you know, an asset was created, bids were requested, then the owner was changed, and now bids have been requested again. So I can go ahead and make another uh, bid. And let's say I bid 162. And the concept is the same. Like as a, when I place this bid, now only the retailer and the distributor that are party to this bid can see this bid and, and no one else, uh, the, the retailer, the distributor and the regulator can see this bid and no one else on the network can see this bid. So you can go ahead and make this bid and let's sign in as the, and as the, as the distributor, I can go ahead and refresh this. And I, and I see this, uh, I see the past bid because I, as the distributor, I was a member of that bidding process. So I can see it, but the retailer can't. So I can go ahead and accept this. And when I do this, the ownership will now actually change and the retailer will become the new owner. So let me go ahead and do that. And 
now if I refresh this page, I see the same thing. The bid has closed and I can see that the owner was updated. And if I go to the home page, I see that, you know, um, this is now showing up under my assets. So now let's just look at the regulator's view as well. The regulator can't really participate in the process. They only have a read only view. And the way all of this works is through smart contracts. So like all the permissions and what different roles can do in this network is controlled by smart contracts. Uh, so as you can see, there's no, there's no opportunity for the regulator to do anything except just look at all the transactions that have happened. So from a regulator's perspective, the regulator was part of both the bidding processes. So the regulator can see both the bids, the regulator can see the chain of events that have happened and how the asset has, uh, assets ownership has changed over time. So this is a demo of our uh, track and trace application. Uh, we, we are able to integrate with OAuth servers. Uh, we have private chains to store certain state that can only needs to be shared amongst a subset of the participants. Uh, and then we have full-blown governance structures that control uh, mechanisms on how you can add and remove members from private chains. Um, and that was our demo. Samrat's done a really good job of showing off the features and the functionality of our track and trace application. One of the things that I'm really impressed with is the amount of data that we can actually capture. Not only information around the product identifier, such as the UPC code, but also with EPA regulations, a GTIN number, or whatever other indicator that you may have for the products that you would like to track. As you saw product move through the entire supply chain, it's important to know that we could add more participants or remove participants depending upon how quickly your supply chain is coming together. Uh, so again, from our perspective, we sit and think, how can we help you out? How can we help you get started? So today I'd like to go ahead and offer you an opportunity to really take that first step on your blockchain journey. We at Block Apps have put together a really low risk way to get started. That's with our Block Apps Accelerator Program. This is a 90 day program where we would select a product that you would like to track through your supply chain and put together really the scope of work for that. We start a POC with the end in mind. What would we like to do in production? But in this program, what we wanna be able to do is have a very short time between now and when you would see value from our solution. So contact me out the information below. You can email me for sure, call me on the phone, connect with us on our webpage, and we would be happy to help guide you on your first steps to successful blockchain implementation.